Welcome to the third episode of How's It Made. Today we have the Tipman X7 Phenom electronic paintball gun, uh, and we're going to tear it apart and see how it's made. Positive how it goes together. Oh, well that is really cool. Okay, so what this is, it's a single injection molded piece with two living hinges, they call them. They're very thin pieces, places in the design that are, that are meant to be flexible. Uh, that's, that's called a compliant mechanism and there's a whole um, expertise and science that goes into producing living hinges uh, because it's insanely cheap. I mean, you don't have to do anything to that to make it a hinge. It's built into the plastic. Now, eventually, if you do that, a bunch, you know, hundreds and thousands of cycles, eventually it's going to break. But that's not this was that's not what this is meant to do. This is injection molded just like this, you know, with an A half and a B half side of the mold, and then they pop it out of the mold, and that's it. That's all there is to it. And that is really cool. The amount of money that went in that th this probably cost per piece is probably less than 50 cents. And, uh, you know, the tool costs money to make, but you could make millions of these at 50 cents a piece. And that tooling cost would be almost, almost negligible at that point. So that is really cool. And making thick, thick, parts out of plastic is not cheap. So if they just tried to make this solid, A, they'd have a bunch of manufacturing problems with that because thick plastic in injection molding wants to sink and warp and distort and it just looked like crap. Um, uh, and then there's other ways to make hollow plastic parts, uh, but those are more expensive per piece. You know, blow molding uh, is, is one example. Uh, how you know that's how gasoline containers and milk jugs and stuff are made are with a blow molding um, but this is this is cool everything you need built right in, right in and it's not meant to be a functional part so it didn't have to have any further detail to it it does it does what it's supposed to do for 50 cents that's really ingenious right there Okay, so here are those two parts. Nothing particularly interesting. You know it's injection molded um, by the telltale ejector pin marks and a number of other reasons. There's, there'd be no other reason to make a part, you know, with a, that, of this shape in any other process, but that's one of the, one of the dead giveaways. I uh, don't see a gate location or anything like that, but that's, these are, you know, pretty straightforward, about as simple as injection molding parts can be. And this is uh, another injection molded part, um, this time made out of a clear plastic, most likely polycarbonate or uh, Lexan, possibly, acrylic. All right, moving on. Okay, so here we have uh, an aluminum machined barrel and uh, a fair bit of expense had to go into making this because of all these holes. There's no seam, so this isn't sheet metal that's been welded into, into a round shape. It's a, it's a solid chunk of aluminum. Uh, it's got very uh, precise threads on it and bunches of holes. So each, this this had to be rotated and each one of those drilled. Um, it possibly could have been done by a laser process, um, but that's, I don't know, that's kind of thick. But uh, it definitely could be done with a laser process. Um, but something about that, just since there's threads on it, they probably just did that in the same machine that they used to cut the threads. Just did all of that. So that's that. Pretty simple, but definitely not uh, the cheapest part, just because anytime you got to machine something, start from a, a big chunk of aluminum and machine it, 
um, there's going to be costs associated with that. All right. So here we have three individual injection molded pieces and you can kind of feel or I can that things are starting to get a little bit more substantial. These are these are pretty stiff. They have a, a pretty pretty thick wall. So you can tell we're starting to get into some some more serious parts, you know, whereas this was chintzy and flimsy. These are these are starting to be more on the realm of, you know, engineered and designed with strength and durability in mind. So again, pretty pretty thick injection molded plastic part. Uh, that's a that's a pretty substantial wall thickness in in the realm of injection molding. You rarely go much thicker than that. Uh, just because the the material tends tends not to uh, not to fill that well into places that are much thicker than that, so that's this is definitely in the realm of of an engineered designed to be strong part, as opposed to your typical consumer crap that you're going to get in the toy aisle of you know Walmart. All right, so now we're getting into some good stuff. So, all right, so the Tipman is a pretty uh, reputable brand in the paintballing world, and you're starting to see why once we get into into these parts right here. So this is a CNC bent tube. Um, these are, you know, these bends are programmed into. A little uh, extrusion uh, wheel that you know bends them and then bends it, bends it, bends it. And it's all programmed. It's and automated, um, and that's that's not a uh, a cheap cheap process. Um, and so these are machined brass pieces, and they've been soldered onto the end. So this has got to take uh, I think around 300 psi of CO2 in this uh, particular model. So this is this is where if you cheaped out on these parts, uh, this is where you're gonna notice you know you're start, gonna start have leaking and failing seals. Those uh, those O-rings right there, I believe those are silicone, which is uh, one of the higher end uh, O-ring materials that you can get, um, probably because. Uh, they have a wide temperature swing that they can take. They can get really cold and really hot. And uh, expanding gases tend to make really, really low temperatures. So that's a pretty, pretty expensive little little setup right there. Now this this is kind of my home base with engineered injection molded parts. That you can just see the the detail that went into this and. You see these all these ribs right here those aren't necessary on uh, like a toy or something that was designed just to be a kind of a throwaway or or a cheap mass-produced part you would not go to the expense of putting all machining all those little cavities inside of the injection mold that made this part you wouldn't go to that trouble unless you really cared about quality um, those you know, uh, if you're not familiar with how molds are made, most of the time they're uh, EDM machined, uh, which is electronic deposition um, machining, and it is an insanely slow process. Uh, takes can take days um, because of how tiny the electrode is, and and so you wouldn't go to the trouble and expense of putting all those those little ribs in there unless you really cared about this being a durable strong part like that's that's stiff that's not bending so now this is pretty cool so this now qualifies as an electromechanical assembly because it has a built-in circuit board um, which makes sense it's in the name uh, it's called an electronic paintball gun and I believe this is a 
solenoid valve that allows it to be full auto. If you put it, yeah, if you put it in the right setting uh, and you just hold down on the trigger, this, the programming inside of here and with this giant capacitor is going to is going to actuate this valve really quickly and that's one of what's going to give you your uh, fully automatic burst and then three round burst functionality that's pretty cool all right so now that's i'm not going to take this trigger mechanism apart but these l all look like little die cast pieces of either steel or zinc or magnesium they feel feel like they might be zinc not yeah that trigger might be steel I don't know but that's pretty much all there is to that all right okay so wow this this product really has it all so this is a a big die cast aluminum piece uh, you can see the it's, it's obviously metal you can tell by the the color there and the, the you wouldn't bother to paint uh, an injection molded part um, but you can also tell by the weight and obviously metal but this is in, in um, die casting is basically the metal form of injection molding except you don't need nearly as much pressure because the molten metal just kind of flows naturally uh, they put a little pressure to it but nowhere near how much it much pressure it takes to squeeze the plastic into this could take you know 30 40 thousand psi I think most die casting is done at you know less than 100 psi so this is a, a serious part you know you can you really knock somebody out with that. That's uh, this is meant to be uh, the main structural um, underpinning of the whole assembly, and so they didn't uh, didn't cheap out and make it out of plastic. Uh, made it out of out of most likely aluminum, uh, just judging by the the color and the weight. So this 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 product really has it all. This is probably the highest precision part of the whole build. Um, these are obviously machined parts. It's a machined, machine threaded cap right there. Uh, feels like a mixture of steel and aluminum. Um, yeah, so this has to handle the the 300 psi and uh, and sending. Uh, the propellant through the barrel that's going to make the paintball fire so makes sense that that uh on there's no no cheap processes i see on on these parts everything is precision machined and same deal here this is the other half of the of the main assembly die cast again and I believe this is the automatic feeding mechanism I think there's probably a motor down in there um, but not that could just be a, a jam jam relief mechanism but well thank you guys for watching this I uh, hope you enjoyed it um, like subscribe share please if you liked it uh, leave a comment and uh, if you have uh, particular products in mind that you think uh, you would like to see um, analyzed in the way uh, that I do and uh, and any other ideas you know feedback you think it's boring you think it's stupid you think it's awesome you know let me know all right thank you guys and uh, have a good one